eggs. Sunny side up. <laughs> Sunny side up. No, actually over easy with a hash brown. Also over easy. <laughs> so is a hash brown? I went to Langley. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's amazing I didn't meet you there. <laughs> I know, I was with a client. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to another episode of the Steel Entrepreneur Show. This is episode 37, as Danny so nicely corrected me. And today we have Chick May, right? Chick May? Yes. I got it, good. Chick May is a local financial educator with World Financial Group. She immigrated to Canada 12 years ago with very little English, but has come an incredible way since. And today we're going to talk about building and managing wealth, creating wealth, and, um, and a little bit about legacy at the end. So thank you for joining us. And Chikmay, I'm going to jump right into it if that's okay. Of course. Go ahead. Just because I've, I've got a feeling a lot of the answers to these questions are going to be very long. <laughs> so I don't want to waste any time and I want to get right to the good stuff. Um, as always, I do my best to try and explain what you do, but financial educator is, is, pretty, is pretty broad. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? So uh, basically, when we sit down with family, we um, not only help them or find out where they want to go from where they were. Some people, they say they want to save money for children education. Maybe they want to save for uh, buying their first car, or mm -hmm. maybe they want to save money for uh, getting into their first property, whatever is that. It's very easy to just say how much you can save, what's your budget, and then you can save for this long, and then you can get your, uh, your, your goals, you can hit your goals, right? But uh, for us, mostly we, we help people to really understand where their money is. Let's say people save money in the RSP. Yep. Number one, because for the tax return. Of course. Right? That's number one. It's my one. favorite. <laughs> yeah. Huh? But then it's not only you let your money sit there and do nothing for you. You want that money work for you so that you can use it down the road, right? Mm -hmm. So we really get into details, make really people understand what this all about that you are having. Everybody got a lot of stuff. RSP, tax free saving account, ISP. But when I ask, where do you put it? How, what is your rate of return? Most of the time, I got a blank stare. What yes, do you mean? Yes, of course. Right? Yeah. It's because everybody at the it, it, everybody come. I can't remember what the deadline is. It's like the end of February, or the end of March, right? It's the end of February, isn't it? Uh, the first RSPs. day, yes. So yeah. first of March, yeah. Which is basically the Canadian equivalent, I suppose, of like a four hundred one k, something like that. Yeah. Um, I think it's. I think it probably has a little bit to do with most people when they do it. They do it at the very end. And so they come in, the financial planner is super busy mm. because they have someone right behind you who's also leaving it to the last minute. Yeah. And so th there's no time to walk through it. And then they're busy for the rest of the year. So you, you don't you know, follow up or you don't. Mm -hmm. So I know for me personally, I've got it. Um, I've got, I did it just for tax reasons because I didn't want to, I wanted to defer the tax. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I put it in the most modest thing possible because I don't understand anything okay. as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that was it. And I probably will not revisit it ever oh. unless I have to. Yes. Yeah. That, that's the story. Most people like that. But it's okay. You're young. You have still a long ways to go. And now you know me. And I can always sit down with <laughs> you and then really, really help you. How don't would you describe yourself in a, um, in a personal sense? Like what kind of, who are you? Who is Who Chick Who am May? I? Huh, that's a very good question. Uh, and I will try to answer that from my perspective. Who is Chick May? Because uh, as of now, for the past few months, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. I mostly, maybe because of the books that I read, mm -hmm. is all those books uh, pointed out inside me. That's why. I'm trying to find who is Chick May actually. It's not the Chick May that I presented out to the world and what's inside, the, the inside, the real Chick May. Uh, and that's very interesting. Once I got the answer, I will let you know. Because before, I have no idea that the Chick May that I presented and the Chick May inside is totally two different things. But now I've been sitting uh, with my own thoughts and I found out it is, it's true. 
who I am presenting out there and the real me inside is slightly different. What do you think triggered um, that sort of um, looking inwards? Like, what, what, what do you think was the, the catalyst for that? Because I, I think, I, I don't know that I've necessarily got there yet. And I think that's, that's a really important sort of point in your life when you start to think, think deeper, I suppose, or look <laughs> deeper, if I you will. I guess so, because that's really very uncomfortable in the beginning. Um, and it is a very good question what you're asking because the catalyst of those is I think it's the books that I come to read nowadays. And have you ever heard the saying that when the students ready, the teacher will appear? I haven't. Never. I okay. Don't think so. so that one I heard this saying long time ago, and I used to think it's only in the people because I look at the person, the people that I come uh, into, into my. Uh, uh, environment or interaction is the people that I will learn something from, mm -hmm. right? But actually, it's not only people. It can come from the experience, can come from the books that you read, can come from the movie that you watch. Something just click, you know, it turn on the light bulb in your mind. And for me, the catalyst is just, for some reason, this past few months, all the books that I read pointed out into me, into me. Because I was always thinking, how can I give more value to people that I help out there. Because when I sit down with a uh, family, talking about money, talking about finance, I put my 1,000% everything to make sure that they understand and then we, we can move forward, help them, right? To reach their financial goals. But sometimes I uh, look into, it's just n not enough somehow. Sometimes I feel discouraged. Sometimes I feel um, sad. Sometimes uh, unhappy, some unhappy not with them, but I wasn't unhappy with me too, because with myself, because I thought that I've done everything that I can, you mm -hmm. see? But there's just dissatisfaction inside of me. And lo and behold, of this book come, <laughs> and I read them, and yeah. So that's how it's come. Okay, about so I it. think, it, we were talking about, before we, we started taping, we were talking about how um, sometimes, you'll read a book and it won't really do anything for you, but mm -hmm. you can come back a couple of years later and depending on where you're at at that point, it can mean a, a whole lot more to you. And perhaps that's kind of what you're, dis you're kind of discovering is for whatever reason, you're, you're ready to learn and the teacher has appeared. Yes. In this case, maybe a few sentences of the books uh, calls to me mm -hmm. and then pick my interest and I keep on reading, keep on reading, makes sense because maybe my mind is open in a certain way, uh, ready to uh, absorb this information, then yeah. Do you think it's, um, do you think there was anything, and I, I think maybe I'm asking the same question twice, but when I, when I became ready to, to really absorb information and, and kind of be humble and, and be a little less ignorant, I suppose, mm -hmm it opened the door for so, so much. And I haven't figured out what it was that really triggered that, that, that kind of, when I decided to open the book, I was ready to learn. Is it for somebody, for somebody who's maybe struggling with that or has opened a book and it's just not doing, should he just read another book or try a different book or is it just, a, what do you think? My point, personal view, I cannot answer that one because these kind of things, I don't know, whatever that you believe out there, I'm, and I'm not talking about religion. I hope we all believe there is a greater out of us. I hope, surely mm -hmm. hope, right? I believe that at certain times in life when something has to change and then that things has to appear, whatever is that, maybe, maybe in the bad experience, we will be being crying, sad, feeling why me, warm me, mm -hmm. all those things. But then if we really look into, maybe there's something can come out from this good stuff. And the same things with reading books. One thing I understand, if you force yourself to do anything, most likely you will not get it. Mm -hmm. Most likely you will not find it. So maybe it's just life has to happen. Yeah, be open, so just, I just believe. just live life and be open. Yeah, be open. Let it be, let it happen. We do the best that we can. And yeah, yeah. Cool. Since we're talking about books, um, this was going to be a, uh, a question for later on, but you and I got to talking about books and there were a couple 
that I haven't read that, <laughs> quite honestly, I'm a bit ashamed I haven't read yet. Um, since we're, we're talking about um, finance and financial education and saving money and all that kind of stuff today, um, which is why I, I felt it so necessary to have you on the show because you're so good at it. Um, could you tell me your favorite books, both related to financial education and n not related to financial education? Books that, that people should, <laughs> if they're interested in being stronger at these things, mm -hmm. they should definitely read. Oh my goodness, there's tons of good books out there. Yes. And really depend on, even if we choose something like finance, is many topics or subtopics mm. in this in this How case, about right? Money management. Money management. So money management. Um, books by this. And not like financial instruments or anything like that, but just just being smarter with your money. Yeah. Uh, Gail Oxlade, I believe. Okay. Uh, she has a few books. It's pretty good. Can I, you spell the last name? Gail Oxlade. So e um O X L A D E. Okay. Now we have to check that one. Okay. That's, uh, this that's lady, fun. I believe, uh, based out from Toronto, mm -hmm. Ontario, and she wrote a few books and she has TV, TV what's it, channel or no TV series something like that. Okay. Uh, I don't watch movies so much. I don't watch TV, so when I watch something like this, and this has been a few years ago, three, mm -hmm. four years ago, um, yeah, you can find it. So any of hers is pretty good, makes sense, very common sense things, you know, uh, if basic finance. Yeah. Uh, and then the wealthy barber is pretty good. The wealthy good. barber, it's a classic. Yeah, that one is, uh, yeah, is common sense. Is that by again, too. David? Or something Chisson. Uh, yeah, Chison, the last name remember. is pretty. Yeah, uh, yeah, English is not my first language. I don't so. remember. <laughs> Danny, do you remember that one? Chilton. 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 Yes, there that's it. Go. That's it. Yeah. So that one is if you want to start with. Yeah. Um, pretty easy, not too heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. Very easy to understand. Yeah. Uh, in terms of other books, uh, personal development. Uh, I would say you should read the uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yes. That's number one. However, I need to read that. I have to say it is heavy. It's a big book. I've, it, I've got it sitting on my shelf. It's, I, I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit anxious about it getting one, into it. One, one page at a time. One yeah. page at a time. Don't force yourself to read them all. But that book is very heavy. Uh, not not heavy? only heavy as you can tell. What do you mean heavy no. though? Like just very uh, the, the content The contents, yes. Okay. Uh, I believe you have to read it a few times, uh, a few times, yeah? And it's not necessarily after you finish and then you read it again, no. Maybe in a few weeks, a few months, and then you read it again, and you have to read it again. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a very good book. I love it. Any books by John C. Maxwell about leadership yes. is fantastic. Uh, if for the entrepreneur, for people who wants to start a business, whatever business is that out there, if they really have a... Uh, a good calling to serve others. Uh, I believe they should read the uh, uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Sinek? Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. These are all amazing books. There's awesome book, that one. Um, mm -hmm. I read that one, I believe, last year. Yeah. I was kicking myself, kind of. Like, oh, I, how come I didn't know this one, right? Earlier. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. It applies to so much. Yeah. I feel like so many conversations that I have with people, I think to myself, okay, so why am I saying this, right? And so when I go to explain something to somebody, I start with why. So it's, it, does, it absolutely does not have to be in a business sense whatsoever or in a leadership sense. It can be absolutely in a conversational sense. Yeah, this book is very good. Very it good. is great. Yeah. Cool. Well, those are some really, really good suggestions, and there's a couple there that I need to start <laughs> reading very soon. I, I have read um, Start With Why a few times. I find that any book that I read, I have to, I have to do it a couple times. The good ones. I don't know usually. if other people are like that, but. Oh yeah, the good one usually. Yeah. Yeah. I think I listened to that one on audiobook too the first time, and yes. it doesn't usually work for me, especially books like Start with Why. Well, Start with Why is not a great example, but there are some books like Profit First, for example, which was the last book I read. It, you, I don't know how you would do it on an audio. Audio, yes, not I, the best for Profit First, yes. Definitely. Yeah. All right, that was, well, that was two questions. That, that took, uh, that was two questions at least. It's okay, so, we answer it in one. <laughs> um, so going back, um, 
you you were born in Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, and then you moved to was it Singapore first and then Hong Kong or yes. vice versa? Uh, Singapore I, yes. then Hong Kong. Yeah. What did you do? What, what did you you? What did you do when you were there? I work as a nanny there. Okay. So I look after in Singapore two, two girls. The first one I built, uh, five years old and ten months baby. So mm-hmm. I look after them in Singapore. I work over there for four years with the same family. And after that, I moved to uh, Hong Kong. And the reason why I moved to Hong Kong because from Singapore I wanted to come to Canada, but there is no channel open. I try. What do you I, mean no channel open? Nobody help can help me. Find but, out to come here. But in Hong Kong. But somebody in in Singapore, the one who actually like so this is like employment agency. Yeah. Uh, he had my application for about six months, I believe, or eight months. Okay. And I was kind of desperate. I said, "How come nobody wants a nanny?" And they say, "You know, they say he, he, uh, he said, Chick Mei, you should maybe go to Hong Kong, and maybe somebody can help you from there." What he said is, they never sent Indonesian uh, to go to Canada directly. But they have sent Philippines. Yes. But for some reason, my case is different. So okay, so I follow his advice. I went to Hong Kong, worked for two families. Uh, so I was there for four years. So two years each family, and then I found. And this is funny. I look, 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 look. The same way I send my application, but this to pending, waiting, waiting, waiting. But uh, let's say no takers from. Canadian side until so I was. So somebody has to, some Canadian has to see your application and say. A family has I to say, I want to. Yes, I okay. want to hire this person, and because a lot of things and are involved. To work you, per, yes, exactly, okay. work permit and all those things, right? So uh, I was kind of, uh, kind of, almost desperate until one uh, of my friend told me, Hey, Chick May, are you still wanting to go to Canada? I say, yes. Say, maybe you should go to this. There's one uh, hotel in Kowloon area. It's a very crowded place. They say, there's a, one lady who came from uh, Toronto directly to Hong Kong twice a year to conduct interview. So I say, okay, what time and where exactly, right? And then she gave me the address. Yeah. I went there, have the interview. And this is Miss Audrey uh, from Diamond Personal in, in Toronto. She said, Chick May, I don't see how come you have difficulties. Uh, you will get employers pretty soon. That's what he, she said. And yeah, it was true. Uh, about a week later, I got received a call from her saying a few families want to interview me. And then when it's the best time. How does that interview time, look like? Is it uh, on uh, Skype or No, no, phone. Uh, or? phone. Okay. At the time, I believe no Skype yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're Oh, right. maybe Skype, but it's not so open yeah, yet. Yeah, I don't know. A laptop is not so open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cell phone, there's no smartphone yet, right? So, uh, so yeah. So, about three days later, uh, interviews with a few families, and then one family say, yes, okay, I want to hire you. And then about, um, when now? So, it's about November, December, and I fly to Canada May the next year. So, it's about... So, which year is this? 2005. 2005. I yeah. Why to leave Indonesia in the first place? Uh, Why leave leave your family and and everything that you're familiar with in the first place? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, considering I was 19 at the time, I just oh, you were wow. Okay. I was 19. I just finished high school the year before. Work mm-hmm. a little bit. So the reason is because of the number one is economy reason. Economy reason saying my family is very humble. Um, uh, so what I watch is my mom work very hard. Mom start he, her day about 4 a.m. waking up, washing clothing, uh, cooking rice. We think we work hard. <laughs> <laughs> 4 a.m. until um, and then we went to work uh, and then coming back home about 10 o'clock, uh, right? <laughs> and so is I. I couldn't. I think not only me. There I have three siblings. So mm-hmm. four of us. At least not the youngest one because it's just young, very, very small. But the three of us couldn't wait to grow up so we can work properly and Mm -hmm. help mom. And contribute. Yes. And so I was very happy when I finished my high school. I said, yeah, we can work now. (laughs) And uh, lo and behold, eh, you see, um, high school, whatever you can do, other people can do it. So it's pretty tough, uh, competitive, very, very, very. So that's the reason why I left because I need money. I need big money. I need to help my mom. Uh, we need to own um, a house. We never owned a house before. 
uh, and the last house there before I left, it was bad house. <laughs> Lots Tell of. Tell me about the pots and pans. Uh, the pots, and, yes. So many leakings. Uh, so the roofs is just not good. Uh, we don't have renters' right. So landlord is not. Um, you can't call them up and uh, force them to fix yeah, anything. Yeah, basically you fix it. When you yeah. live there, you fix it, right? So yeah, there's one time monsoon that I remember vividly. Um, it was monsoon season, mm -hmm. and then raining badly. And we use all mom's pots and pans to take care of the water, and there's no pots to cook. And there's the things that push me out, because as afraid as I am of the outside world, mm -hmm. I cannot stay. Yeah. Right? So what's worse than what is, has been anyhow? What's worse? So I was kind of, I'm taking it. <laughs> Makes sense. OK. One of the things that, um, that blew my mind here here in vancouver we i i found myself i guess it was about a year and uh a year and a bit ago i found myself in sort of a position where i was making really good money but i was of the mindset that actually i guess it was a little bit before that so let's say two years ago i was of the mindset that i could not afford a home in vancouver absolutely not um why did i need a home how, why did I deserve a home? Um, uh, you know, I'll just rent and eventually I'll save up enough money. You were earning $12 an hour. And I know this was a number of years ago before things, you know, blew up, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but you were earning $12 an hour and you were able to afford to buy a home. You were working at it. Uh, were you still working as a nanny at yes, that time? Yes, I was still working as a nanny. H how... What does that look like? Walk me through that. How, I, I, th I think, I mean, you even, even folks who work in a, a restaurant, for example, where they earn, let's say, I don't know what minimum wage is here, let's say $14 an hour, um, which might actually be high, and then plus tips. So, you know, maybe we're talking $20 an hour. Even at $20 an hour, that is not in the cards as far as most people are considered. So how, what does that look like? Walk me through how you, one, decided, okay, I can do this, and two, how did you do it? Okay, this is going to be a very long answer for that. That's one. okay, I've got time, <laughs> I've got time. So let's put it this way. First of all, in terms of whatever uh, financial goals that you want to reach, money or your income or your salary is never the factor, actually. It's not about how much you make, it's how much you save. Now, you can be making 200000 Where do you get that from? Where, where, did, how did you, where did you learn that? It's open secret. That's an open secret. It's open secret. Solid. Okay. Yes. Continue. Sorry. You can make 200000 mm -hmm. If you spend 250000 you're nothing. Now, I can be making 30 bucks, uh, 30000 a year. If I'm saving $25,000, i am still way ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it is never about how much money you make. My mom always says, I, I used to call her when I first started my business and I was making real money for the first time in my life, like real money, not just paper route, restaurant, et cetera, like real money. And I would say, mama, we just, I just had like my first hundred dollar day or something mm. like that. or so my first, I don't know what it was. And, and, and she would be happy, but she's, she's not one of those mothers who gives you a pat on the back or anything. Mm. Like she's just not like that. Mm -hmm. And she would say to me, Okay, but how much is in the bank? Ah, uh -huh, there you go. Your mom knows that. Yes. Well, yes. she comes from an immigrant uh, household. Ah. And so she learned from a very early age um, what it is to have money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah. No, no problem. But it is, this is the, the open secret. That's what it mm -hmm. is. You can be making plenty, but how much is it you're keeping? How mm -hmm. much is it you're paying yourself first? Now, uh, so the, next, the second thing is the why. Do you really want to own the house? Do you really want to own a property? That's why you have this mindset early on. You say, uh, early on you say, uh, do I deserve a house? Right? Those things. It's, it's not a mind, the proper mindset, if I may say it. You may, from, please. From, I know. From my point I, of view, I know. I okay? agree. The thing is, once you know your why, why do you want to own a house, there is nothing can stop you to make it happen. What was your why? My why? Well, growing up like that in Indonesia, I don't want to be moving here and there. I need to own a house. <laughs> you want to have you know? pots to cook with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? The thing is, and, and this is before I understand about equity, 
mm -hmm. about how your house can grow money in it and everything. No, I just want a house that I can call a home, my own, and then just relax and after working hard at home, outside and come back home, just just be happy, right? This is something that I call. No anytime saying, Chick May, sorry, we are going to sell it. Chick May, sorry, we mm -hmm. need to use it, right? Can you imagine that? So that's it. That's why by making just 12 bucks an hour, I can hit this one. However, I have to clear one thing though. I was making $12 per hour, but I didn't work eight hours a day. Okay. I work way more than eight hours a day. Tell me more. Way more. I work 16 hours a day. Okay, so that's how money can accumulate. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the why is the things that push you forward. All right, I believe I answer your question? Almost. Oh, so, okay. whatever the math is, 16 times 12, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's uh, what, is that? what is that? 126, calculate it, then yeah, 200 I'm not something. Bother. <laughs> uh, you can just flip it up, you don't even have to. Flip that up. Mm, oh yeah. Yeah. Sixteen times twelve. One hundred one hundred and ninety two. Okay, so one hundred and ninety two before tax. Mm. Wow. Those are good days. That's good days. Those yeah. are good days. That you know, let's say that's one hundred and fifty uh, after tax kind and of. And the thing. funny thing is, I didn't feel tired because that's what I because worked you had towards your something. Yes. Yeah. Now we will look back and say, oh, how honored I did that. But yeah. <laughs> So I guess the, the, the question that remains unanswered is walk me through how you w would then save. Because, I mean, yes, $150 a day is, is good money. You can, you can survive very well with $150 a day. But having the discipline to live well beneath your means so as to be able to you know, save money, how, how did you do that and what did that look like? Like how much would you put away? Um, how did you teach yourself to sort of live well, be beyond, well beneath your means? Tell me about that kind of the stuff. The thing is, uh, a lot of people think it's as a sacrifice when you do not use up all your, uh, what you have, let's mm -hmm. just put it there, all your money, let's say, yeah. right? You live below your means, like what you say. Now, growing up in Indonesia, we make do with whatever. Reuse, reuse, reuse. Yeah? <laughs> Nothing broken, don't buy new ones. Yeah? Mm. There's no such thing as you buy new iPhone, new Android every single year. No, right? Mm -hmm. So all those kind of things. Now, let me say one thing. Maybe this is, can help other people out there. A lot of people thinking saving 10%. Yeah? Saving 10% is the minimum you have to pay yourself, minimum, mm -hmm. if you're working for somebody. If you're an entrepreneur, when you have no idea if you're going to eat tomorrow or not, mm -hmm. then you better save 20 or 30%, minimum. Okay. Now, in my case, I save very close to 80%. I really make do. Now, I don't eat, um, I don't eat uh, what's that, uh, noodles, what do you call it? Of, Ramen. Ramen noodles, I love it, but I don't. I know it's not the greatest. I don't eat it every single day. But well, you eat, eat vegetable. Uh, you don't eat out, yeah. Sac little sacrifices in the beginning, because my wife is bigger. I want this house. I want a place to call myself. I don't care if I don't eat at a five star restaurant. I don't care if I don't have to eat this uh, steak, t-bone. No, I don't. Yeah, T-bone steak, yeah, yeah. T-steak, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> My husband loves that one. Uh, I, I'm not used to eat big chunk of meat. Usually our meat is tiny little bit and with a lot of vegetable. Well, it's just as a flavor, right? Yes. So nothing like that. So we, if we really drastically cut a lot of things, then yes, you definitely can make it. Don't worry. Now, let me be realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got my place, it was 2009. It was long before price like now, yeah? So... Maybe for people who's making 50, 60,000 a year here, if you want to get into a condominium, 500,000? Yeah, 400, yeah. 500,000. Maybe, is... yes, you really have to look outside, not in the middle of the downtown here, no. Maybe you have to go out in the Surrey or whatnot, maybe get the 300,000 first or some sort, yes. right? A lot of things, 
things can get done if you really, really want to make it happen, really. I find um, my peers who are, are looking for homes right now, they, uh, they, they have trouble with the concept of commuting. Ah. So, you know, if for them, they're saying, well, you know, if I can't own a home in Vancouver, forget about it. I'm just not going to own a home, right? What do, you, what, what do you make of that? What do I tell them? Actually, I kind of agree with it. You work where you stay or you stay where you work, yeah? You don't want to travel two, three hours. Not really, not in the mm -hmm. sense of efficiency, no. But if it means getting your foot in the door, you yeah. know, even if it means you got to suck it up for a couple years or a few years um, and make that commute so that you can get your foot in the door. Because, I mean, what, what happens if you don't necessarily make, I guess this is my argument, what happens if you're still making $50,000 two years from now, you still don't own a home, and now the, your, the average home in, in Vancouver is 20-30% 20, higher, but you still don't make any more money? That's a very good argument. Yeah. But it's really back to the feelings again. Are you willing to sacrifice two, three hours uh, drive? Maybe. Is your why powerful enough? Yes, is it? Do you really want to? But if you really... A lot of people think about convenience. They have to be right in the middle of the downtown. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I, I, I really cannot answer this one truthfully because what I can answer is just from my perspective. Mm -hmm. If I really have to have it, my uh, properties outside of the uh, Vancouver. We have one here, uh, Marine Drive, but we have outside more. Yeah. Um, so you go where the money is, basically, mm -hmm. and uh, if you can purchase it, and you purchase it, and it is true, you need to get your feet in. So you're thinking of it more from a return standpoint. Like if you're looking to buy a, buy a home, do you buy it in, in Coquitlam or Surrey or do you buy it in Vancouver where you know that in two years if you had to sell it you're going to get 20% more versus if it was in Surrey, although Surrey is growing like crazy right yes. now, so probably a bad example, but is, is that kind of where you're coming from? There is no bad places to buy in mm -hmm. Greater Vancouver. This is my point of view, the, okay. my, my perspective only, all right? Don't, don't buy anything on what I say. <laughs> this is what, just what I, I was feeling. If you want to buy anywhere, it's good. Anywhere in Greater Vancouver. The only thing is how, how powerful is your money, your purchasing power. Let's just put it that way. Do you have enough money to put it like that? You don't want to bankrupt yourself mm -hmm. to get into this house, right? Now, don't get me wrong. The housing in Vancouver is very hot right now. Last year, some areas get 30%. Mm -hmm. Our places get about 20% average. Uh, we own four properties, uh, combined husband and I. Mm -hmm. So last year was good. Good year is going. But now think about it. Do you really think is uh, feasible for this kind of things uh, for the price to increase twenty percent, thirty percent every single year? No. Not with the salary stuck. Oh, very tiny bit. Neither. No, it's not going to be. But is it going to crumble? Who's to say? I. Personally, don't think so because there's a lot of foreign money. There's a cash coming in. It's not not balloon, yeah, empty. Yeah, it's real hot cash. Air. It's real cash. But really, just be careful. Don't force yourself to get into something if you really cannot afford it. But the thing is, you can save as of now, yeah, pay rent or whatever, save a lot of money. And then when maybe market will settle a little bit, maybe we will there will be some correction, and then you have enough money to get into it, mm -hmm. right? But then if the markets uh, have some correction and you, are, you do not have money to put inside, then... What does the, the, the saving process look like? I, I remember, I think it was, I can't remember where I read it, or maybe someone explained it to me, but they would have envelopes for different, for different things. So you know, they would get their paycheck, they would, you know, for example, put the cash on the table, and then I think this is what my grandmother did. And so then she would take, you know, whatever um, percentage and she would put it in this envelope. This percentage, this one's for food. This percentage, this one's for savings. And so then she would have her envelopes and she would then take the envelopes that were for 
saving or for whatever, maybe you know something what she wasn't going to use now, and she would she would hide those away, <laughs> and then she would have basically her you know the money that she was going to use for yeah. that month, and mm -hmm. that's what she had, and that's it. Mm -hmm. How? I don't think a lot of people do that anymore, at least here in North America, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But how, how, what, what did that look like for you? That one was you just uh, explained earlier is a budgeting, I get, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, budgeting. So you budget how much you will spend for food, how much you will spend for okay, your so rent. Okay, so just draw up a budget. Yeah, and then some people put in the jar and envelope, doesn't matter. Uh, in the beginning, maybe there's a very good uh, method to use, so you can see it. Um, and depend on how strong will uh, you are some yeah. people need some entertainment money so you put I some I used to give it to my mom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give it to her <laughs> okay uh, for me when i really want to save money it's all just bare necessities so food um, uh, renting mm -hmm. and transportation basically anything else doesn't count i have to cut it right to the bare bones if you really want to just put it this in perspective. You are what, wanting to get into five hundred thousand uh, condos, uh, five hundred thousand dollars condos here in Vancouver. You cannot be saving here, there, tiny bit, tiny bit. You have to put big chunks, big chunks. So really, now if you want to enjoy life, <laughs> and uh, North American people love <laughs> to enjoy life, I uh, I come too. from Asia. Asia, we make do. Um, if you want to enjoy life, then yes, you want to put it like this. But possibly, instead of five years getting your own property, three years getting your property, maybe you will get it in ten years. Mm -hmm. Can you live with it? If you can, then it's fine. If you don't think, because the thing, ten years is a long time. Not super long, what is time anyhow, but ten years is quite a while. A lot of things can happen, can get married, can have babies, all these things. All Most likely will change yeah, yes. your goals, your financial goals by then, then by, by house then, mm -hmm. right? My yeah. fiance was very clear with me mm -hmm. when we got together. She said, first we buy a house. <laughs> Step okay. one, we buy yeah. a house. There you go. And there was no compromise. Uh -huh. It's we're going to buy a house and we're going to do it by this time. Mm. That was it. End there of you story. go. Very good fiance. Mm -hmm. Follow her. <laughs> And I'm very, th now that we're putting together our, our wedding, I am very thankful that we took care of that. Mm. Because otherwise, to have to worry about that after mm. spending, you know, what Little. is quite a bit of money mm. on a wedding, mm -hmm. ugh, it would be terrible. Yeah, you don't want to get stressed out on this kind of stuff. All right, so let's see what else I've got for you. We. It's funny, I think I'm getting a little bit better at this because I'm, I'm, I'm finding the right opportunity to put in a question versus mm. just going question by question by question. So we've actually done a bunch of them. Oh, and, is that right? And I, oh, and it awesome. Just, it just happened. It's kind of cool. So I read something that uh, an interviewer's best asset is their curiosity. Okay. Just thought that was interesting. So I, I try and remind myself of that while I'm doing the, of the interviews is, is be, curious. be curious. Don't Don't ask those, don't just ask the sort of, superficial you know one level questions go three levels deeper mm. and just keep asking questions until you get to the really good stuff <laughs> you're doing you're doing great you're doing great i'm a bit of a geek <laughs> um <laughs> thank you danny <laughs> um there's two other things i want to cover i think we've covered a lot uh, a good bit about the the saving and 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 discipline and things like that but the two other topics i want to talk about today are um, self-development and networking and these are two things that I've identified in the, the, the short time that I've known you and the research that I've um, done on you if, if, if you will um, you're a tremendous networker and, and I think Danny you would you would agree with that mm -hmm. I mean that's how you met Danny for example and that's how we're talking today right so I would for somebody who you know, is now seven years, really, I'm just kind of figuring out the networking thing, believe it or not. Um, so seven years in business, and now I'm just thinking to myself, oh, this networking thing, like there's something to it. I should probably go meet people. <laughs> it, you know what it is, is I do it by my computer. Like mm. my business is online. And so yeah. when I talk to people, like I'm not a bad networker, but it's, it's not in person. Mm. And so 
I just get comfortable with that. So I have lots of relationships, but they're on Skype, they're on email, they're on, so it, it's, it's different. So I've kind of hidden behind my computer for a, lot of time, for a long time. Anyways, can you tell me um, how networking has, has contributed in your life? Uh, wow, this is actually one of very, very good question that you can ask me. Because, let's say, putting 20 years ago, or even 12 years ago, when mm -hmm. I just arrived in Canada, mm -hmm. I'm a very... Ottawa, right? I arrived in... I was in Ottawa for a bit, yeah. and then I moved to BC. Gotcha. Uh, I was a very quiet person. I used to think of myself as shy. Mm -hmm. Now I find out, if you think back, no way shy. I'm shy. <laughs> no. But what I am, or what I was before, it was I was reserved, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And I used to think like this don't disturb others so others will not bother you right say that again don't disturb so like don't bother others yes. and then they will not bother you right okay. and in terms of uh, i used to think because i come from asia where we met uh, we tend our own stuff our own business yeah we don't very mm, private yeah you say? private kind we don't be nosy you know mm -hmm. Asking, asking, uh, whatever, those kind of, it, Some people find is, yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's, so it's some a people can thing, think. It really depends, but mm -hmm. in Asia, maybe more, okay. yeah. Uh, we are more close that way. Um, so I came here as a nanny, or even be after, after, after becoming a nanny, I become a bookkeeper. I love numbers, yeah. To me, numbers mm -hmm. don't lie. It, numbers is. Either you make money or you don't make money. There's no gray area there. Yeah? Can we quote that? <laughs> Either you make money or you don't make money. Yes. Yeah. Right. Chick so, <laughs> so this is very clear. So a bookkeeper I found is very easy. You just mm -hmm. put the numbers together and at the end you will find the answer, right? Mm. Um, so those things, uh, as a nanny, as a bookkeeper, I don't need to network. But as a financial educator where I help people understand about money, I definitely need to network. Mm -hmm. Now, as a person who is quiet, reserved, what do you think? I, can, I do, didn't feel comfortable out there. And it's a sensitive topic. Uh, people, money, people yes. People aren't excited about talking exactly, about money. Exactly, yes, exactly. Uh, it's very interesting actually though. Mm -hmm. I used to think it's sensitive and not many people talk about money. However, what I observe, people can be having chicken wings with beer and they talk, oh my goodness, I'm broke. No money, all those things talk about the lack of money. Let's just say. Mm -hmm. So is it really sensitive? No, really. Hmm. All right? So, so maybe it just needs to be the right environment or? Depends on the people. Okay. Asian maybe, I can say, or oh, please the Asian people forgive me. <laughs> I'm not stereotyping, but maybe mostly us we do not talk about money so openly. Don't mm -hmm. think so. I don't. I don't. I couldn't recall that okay. one. But ever since I'm here, I noticed that when we hang out together with friends, and that's what usually come up. Yeah, uh, the lack of it. Let's see. Uh, uh, so where I was. Um, so networking. So when I'm in finance. I understand that I need to reach out to many people. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is I have to be out there in the middle of many people, of a crowd. So trust me, the first few times is very, very, very painful. I feel very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. feel very, yes, yeah, just totally out of my element. But I just push it. Why? Because of the why, right? I need to do this, I need to master this in order to be successful. So I just push it out there. Now, a lot of people, and this really depends because this is just my observation, my opinion. A lot of people in the networking event, they exchange business card. After that, what do you do with the business card? What do you do? You have to follow up. Mm -hmm. You have to call them. You have to text them. Whatever is that. Hey, nice meeting you yesterday. And what not. Send them an email. Whatever is that. Some people come back. Some people not. And it's fine. As long as that we have done it. And I learned this much. In the first few networking, I thought somebody will reach out to me. And of course, I didn't do anything. right? But nobody reached out to me. So rather than for me waiting, sitting down, doing nothing, waiting, 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 nothing happens, I decided I should 
just be the one who say first, right? Yes. Because I have no idea what is the etiquette mm -hmm. of this networking thing. Uh, and, and I have no idea as a male or female who's supposed to reach out first or whatever. I worry about putting the wrong impression, yes. right? I'm a married lady after all. So, <laughs> but anyhow, I, I, I cannot be the person who sit down and do nothing. So I have to do something. So yeah, I just start uh, sending email, uh, sending email, texting sometimes, sometimes I give them a call. Sometimes nowadays call, nobody pick up, right? So yeah, texting, pretty good. Um, and yeah, from then on, I get some reply and then we got to talk. What I found from network, network is what is it actually? If you're just hoping people knows you as Adam still doing what, a web design or whatever, what do you do anyhow? Internet I, marketing. I, yeah, internet marketing. And I met so many internet marketers out there. I bet. Now, how can I tell people, hey, uh, you can use Adam service here if I don't really know you? Mm -hmm. How can I do that? It's Impossible. First of all, I need to know you are a good person. I need to know how your integrity. Now, if I'm referring people to you and you are no good, my name is yes. gone down to the mud here, right? You do damage. Yes, so no good. People will point and figure to me. I know it's their own uh, free choice to reach out to you. I mean, I say, hey, talk to Adam, they reach out. But it's because of me, they know you. So how can I tell people about you if I do not know you? Right? So that's why I think networking is fantastic. But what is the, the most, what's the foundation, what's the be most basic of the networking? You know people, you hope people will spread the words about you. Maybe some of them use your business, use your products, whatever is that. But before you expecting them to help you out, you really have to help them first, right? And to help them, and you really need to know what do you are. do? Who yeah. you are? What can I help you with? Right? Are you a good person? Can I really, really help you? Do I really want to help you? And so how do you generally help people? Like suppose, I guess the way that you get to know them is you give them a call, you send them an email, you start a little bit of back and forth. Maybe you meet privately for coffee instead of just, you know, in a room full of many exactly. other people. Exactly, yes. And and I guess a, a good excuse if you're feeling uncomfortable, it just comes to mind, if you're feeling uncomfortable about that or feeling like you're asking too much, I mean, you made an excellent argument. If you're going to help them, you need to know them. So if you're going to send them business, how do you do that? You get to know them first. Exactly. So you, if, if that's, if perhaps that's a good why. Hmm. All right. A lot of people... And don't get me wrong, early on for me, I thought the, exactly the same way. I just giving all my business card. Who is Chick May, financial advisor? Okay, mm -hmm. I need to know about money, I will reach out to you. Do you really think that happens? No. Mm -hmm. All my clients, all the referrals come is from friends. All the, the network uh, uh, meetings that I went to, I become friends with them. We got to know, they understand. I always be open whatever they want to ask i answer them it's not like oh do you want my business do you want no right is is be open be relaxed be happy you help them and then down the road if they they don't need your help they will refer people to you hands down focus on the relationship focus on your relationship everything else will come yes everything is all in, uh, investment in this kind of things the investment may be not money or maybe the money is very nominal yeah because what is coffee or what not right time and time is the most important thing. And time is something that we don't have in abundance. Yeah? Well, it depends. Really depends. Your point of view here. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what I'm trying to say, time. Time is something that you cannot save. Once it's gone, it's gone. You cannot recapture the time. Right? So be mindful of your time. So a lot of people think like that. I, I don't want to waste my time or whatever. If this person needs my help, they just call me. But think about it. Just sit down and really think about it. That's what I will say about networking. How do you, um, I'm trying to think of, you know, all the people that, that you meet and all the emails you send and calls that you make. How do you, how do you keep track of all that? How do you keep track of all those relationships and, um, and manage that? Like, what, what does well, that look easy. like? Is it like a spreadsheet or? Well, yeah, that's why if you are a savvy with computer, mm -hmm. me, one uh, books and pencil, my trusted friends, I'm mm -hmm. ballpoint in this case. 
And so does each person have a page or how, how, what does that look like? <laughs> I'm trying to imagine. Well, in the beginning, I just write name, meet this guy, guy, this, 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 right? Mr. A, B, C, D, sure, sure. today. The next one, I meet this, 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 this. Uh, did I call them? What is the result, right? And then after that, we become more personal, right? Oh, I know these guys already. We become friends. I don't need those anymore because your your name is in me, in my in yeah. my brain now. I remember. I know everything basically, right? It's all stored up here. Mm -hmm. I don't need this one. But in the beginning, of course, because sometimes in the meetup, it depends uh, how big is the group. Could be 50 people. Can I keep track of the people? No, right? So it helps writing down, oh, I met this guy or this guy. Um, I'm not so great with name. I can remember face, but names is totally, I really need to write Makes down sense. and I will remember, remember how yeah. it is pronounced, it, right? So writing it down, it will uh, uh, make me uh, think, remember about all these people that I have met. Do you connect with them at all on LinkedIn or Facebook or anything like some that? Some of them. Sometimes? Some of them. Um, do you want to hear my opinion about it? Sure, I'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people want to reach out to me or want to connect with me with LinkedIn, and I usually accept it. Um, I think I sent you a request. I think today, yes. I haven't been <laughs> on my uh, computer today. Uh, but the thing is, once you become friends on LinkedIn or even friends with Facebook, then what? Mm -hmm. Facebook is the worst. People post whatever over there, and then it's up to you, of course, you have the, the choice. Either you want to see, you want to know what they have been doing, what they are eating, places they are going, right? So yeah, it's choices, but so what? It's all about the next action you take. How are you going to connect with this person? So don't fall back on, don't fall back on Facebook or LinkedIn connection being enough. You, you, you have to take more action. I don't that. think you can depend on those, yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, connection, yeah, but then you have to have action. What's the next one? Can we meet? Can we chit chat? Because I really need to know what do you do? How can I help you, right? What kind of person you are? All those kind of things from my point of view. Mm, could be maybe other people out there, other entrepreneurs have different thinking. And it's up to them. Uh, it doesn't mm. matter, yeah. What do you do, Danny? Just out of curiosity. I, I use Facebook. I don't yeah. use LinkedIn. You're as bad as me. <laughs> yeah, he's as bad as me. I do, I, I'm terrible at this. And I post cat pictures all day on Facebook. Just yeah, wait till you hear how, um, just wait till you hear how, uh, shoot, what's his name? I met him, just Marco, how mm -hmm. he does it. Has Eva walked you through his spreadsheet? I have seen it. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Else. Oh, yeah. I can't. He, he, he does what you do, but he does it in a spreadsheet. Okay, put all the names, and, yeah, and phone then, numbers. So what he'll do... Um, this guy's name is Marco Pasqua. So Pasqua, yeah. yeah we're, I'm interviewing him in two weeks. Mm. And I won't give too much away, but mm -hmm. he'll he, like after meeting me, he would have put me in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And then he would have written what he learned about me. Mm -hmm. And then he would have looked to all the other people in his spreadsheet and be mm -hmm. like, who can I connect Adam with? Mm. Right? So he... And, and, you know, him and I are getting together and, you know, we will take it from there. That's his action. But mm -hmm. um, he also looks for who can I connect Adam with? How can I help him right now based on the information I have of these other people and the information I have on Adam? Mm -hmm. So he's not only a good networker, he's a good connector. Very and good. I like that. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, there's another thing I've, I've never really heard. So last bit. And we kind of touched on this a bit. So. Feel free to keep it short if you'd like, because I, I, I don't want you to repeat yourself or anything. But we talked about uh, personal development a little bit at the start, where you know we talked about books and we talked about you know sometimes it just the timing needs to be right. What does personal development look like for you? How do how do you find yourself um, improving? What what do you use to what what are your tools? What does what does all that look like? Yes, it's a it's fantastic question actually because it's tangible, it's intangible. Yeah, you cannot how how you measure it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you will feel it though, right? Every day we have to strive to be better than yesterday. And how to do that is by the people that you hang out with, and the books that you have read, I believe. So relationships and books. Yes. Okay. So uh, unless you are. A person who lives in a cave, I guess, so uh, cut out. From Sometimes I feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is to, to grow, right? For us, for ourselves to grow, 
really, you can only use yesterday as the benchmark. Mm -hmm. If yesterday I'm an angry person, can I be less angry today? And tomorrow, can I be a patient person? Maybe it's a little bit a jump, a, a leap, but uh, still, this one has the, the benchmark, right? Um, personal development is very important. I, I do not know if everybody agree with me in this case as a learning, it has to be done every single day, every, not even day, every hours, every moment is learning in our life, right? When I don't learn anymore, it means I'm not here anymore. I'm up there or down there, wherever it is. But while we are alive, we have to be keep on learning. So how open-minded are you in terms of learning? Yeah, And if we keep our minds about learning, about everything and anything, then yes, definitely personal development will happen. And it's all you need time for that one. And over time, it will be compounded. The same like wealth. Uh, you haven't asked me this one, but I will give it to you for free. <laughs> okay? There's only three things you need mm -hmm. to grow your wealth. Number one, you need the money. Without money, you cannot get anything. Mm -hmm. Besides the money, you need the time. If you don't have time, let's say you have 100,000 right now, and then you are 70 years old, and then you are start thinking, of, oh, or maybe you are 60 right now, and you have 100,000. But you have no idea if this is can you is can this money go together with you or not? What happens if you live up to ninety and then you outlive your money? Money is long gone already, right? So we need time. Mm -hmm. That's money. why it's so important to to start saving early because that time is still on your side. Exactly, money, time. This is good, but it's not enough. The last one you need is rate of return. How is your money working for you? Before, I have no idea whatsoever about money. I'm a good saver, but whatever money I put is that the money that is there. Mm -hmm. My money is not working hard for me. Yeah. So, if we only have money and time, doesn't matter you have been saving for 20 or 30 years, there will be some accumulation. But there's one thing I'm sure you have heard about inflation. Inflation will eat into your money buying power every year it will less and less and less. So your rate right? of return needs to outpace at least inflation. Just to break even. Mm -hmm. You need at least 5%, maybe. For the last 35 years, the inflation may be about 3%. Yeah. Year to year, it's very greatly. But I don't think general, about these things. No, <laughs> ordinary people not. <laughs> totally. Know. Why should you? No, hmm. you have been working very hard, right? So this is very important. And the same with personal development. Maybe we read a book today, or maybe a few pages, a chapter today. You don't see it. But over time, it will compounding too. And if you use it, this information that you have gathered, you use it in your life, and then there's the compounding happening. Right? And you definitely will become a better person down the road. Do you set aside like specific time for personal development, or is it just part of the fabric of your, of your yeah. day, of your life? Or? I drive, I listen to audio. Okay. Yeah, I sleep, or before I sleep, I read books. In between, if I have squeezed something, I, I love to hold books, so I will be reading something. I, sometimes I read too much, but yeah, that is. Another thing I would love to share before uh, we finish, mm -hmm. one thing I would love to share, because I believe you, uh, a few of your viewers are entrepreneurs, yeah? yeah. Um, Entrepreneurs, fantastic. I think as long as the desire to be entrepreneur come out to serve humanity uh, for the greater good is fantastic. But if you just want to be entrepreneur and want to beat Walmart for cheaper price, then I guess there's different uh, objectives there. But entrepreneur, being entrepreneur is very hard. Uh, in the beginning at least. You really have to have a strong why and you mm. have the de determination to finish it, to see it through. But it's very good because I don't know if you have noticed, you're so young and everything, but the, uh, the world is changing. It used to be people can work for 20, 30 years with one company. Now it's not anymore. My brother-in-law just get laid off after working for about 30 years or 35 years with one company, just get laid off. 
right? So there is no more what they call it employment. Mm, lifetime employment. Lifetime or, employment, yeah. or uh, there's a, a safety, something about safety, like uh, you can count on your there's no company to safety net. Yeah, no, there's no yeah. more safety net. There, you cannot think about they will pay for your pension or you can get your pension. You don't even want to count on your pension from the government. If you got it, whatever amount it is, it's cherry on the top. Yeah, but you don't want to count on it. So, um, entrepreneur actually is good as long as you move from the side of being uh, active income you want to move to be into the passive income and passive income is where you become a business owner entrepreneurs some people call themselves as entrepreneur but they're actually on the active income still they use two hands to work and you only have 24 hours a day everybody has the same time nobody is special mm -hmm. like 25 hours a day no 24 hours a day right but after these 24 hours even if you work non-stop then what you have to sleep or what Right? There is not enough to grow. So entrepreneur, after becoming self-employed, you want to think to become business owner, where your money or uh, your system, you have to have a system that run your business and making money for you. And your money will work very, very hard for you. Not only sitting on, in the bank doing nothing. Do you have any good systems that you recommend? Do I have good system? Well, it yeah. really depends on the business, mm -hmm. what kind of business you have, right? But uh, what I learned for the past three years, ever since I'm in finance, uh, and this is, I have to thank my company, World Financial Group, to open my eyes about this. What I've learned is you cannot hit or you cannot become great or you cannot touch a lot of people's life just by yourself. You have to have people to help you. And how can you, help these pe uh, how can you have these people to help you? You have to help them first. Uh, there's a saying, I believe I, uh, I read from John C. Maxwell this saying. What he said was, if you help enough people to get what they want, and then you will get what you want. I believe that's yeah, so. Yeah, there's, an there's another one that's very much like that. To have a billion dollars, you have to help a billion people. Like, oh yeah, that's super easy then. A dollar each. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But basically, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. I like so, that. So, yeah. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you. I think that's a great place <laughs> to end, actually. Um, at the very end of each show, I give um, my guests an opportunity to just basically how how can people get in touch with you how should people get in touch with you um, is there anything that that you want to mention that they should check out anything like that uh, what should they check out um, one thing I will just say it's, it's your opportunity for self-promotion we'll call it that yeah I believe the more people I helped and then everything will come. That's what it is, right? But one thing is I believe everybody of us, each of us has to take ownership of our life. If we keep on waiting on other people to make things happen, usually we will be left behind. Mm -hmm. So we have to take this moment to move forward. Don't wait on anything. Uh, for me, I don't know if we can put uh, my website on the things yeah, yeah maybe yeah, it's easier yeah. because of my name yeah. it's just uh, my website is uh, chickmechan.wfgopportunity.com uh, perfect and yeah, then we'll you can put see. it in there it's easier if people want cool. to take a look there's some financial concept and whatnot if they want to know my phone number there if they want to reach out and yeah perfect thank you so much thank you i really it's appreciate awesome. it well that's it for episode 37 um if you have any questions um, if you want to share it we appreciate all of those things obviously um, if you want to get into uh, get in touch with uh, chick mai she'll chick may sorry <laughs> it'll take me a few times um, we'll link out to to her information and um, well that's that's about it so thank you for your time thank you for your attention and have a wonderful week see you later